Welcome to the CCIE Nugget series. I'm so glad that you've decided to join us for this walk through Cisco technology because I really think you're going to enjoy this and you're going to learn a ton from this series. This introductory nugget, I wanted to gear it to be a very useful introduction to Cisco. So here's what my plan was. First off, we'll talk about the goal of this series. This will be the mission statement for the uh, Nugget series of CCIE. We'll then get into the CCIE exam facts, things like the past score, how to register, how much the cost is, uh, the facts about the exam, and then we'll transition into what this course is going to talk about, the major umbrellas of technology that we're going to cover, and then we'll uh, get into the specific nuggets that we will drill into inside of those, and we'll talk about whether it's good to jump around in this course and that sort of thing. Then we'll move into assembling the practice lab, what equipment you should have if you decide to build your own Cisco practice lab when studying for the CCIE. And I'll even talk about that decision in and of itself. Some people decide not to build a practice lab. They decide to go with a rental or even other ways of studying for the Cisco CCIE. Then the most valuable part of this nugget will be the tips and tricks. These are kind of a compilation that I've assembled, some other people have worked with me, we both, we all studied for the CCIE lab exam, and we put together kind of all the tips and tricks that we learned that are time-saving, they make you more efficient, they make you quicker with a lot of the configurations that you're going to do. So this is where I'll spend most of my time and give you some of the highlights that I've found when studying for the CCIE lab exam myself. Here is the mission statement for this entire series. It is to model and configure advanced LAN and WAN topologies and scenarios. Now you might look at that and go, wait a sec, I'm here to get my CCIE, I'm here to pass this CCIE exam. Well, Cisco was absolutely brilliant when they developed this exam, and we'll get into the facts about it in just a moment, but this exam is not one that can be taught. It's not like the CCNA or CCNP exams where you can kind of learn the terms, learn the lingo, learn the technology and pass the exam by hitting a written test. No, this is an exam where you're going to be deploying a network that is just as advanced as most internet service providers are running out there today. Now this series is going to be all about showing the different technologies that comprise the routing and switching exam environment but I'm going to do it in the sense that this is not this is not a test prep this is not a, a certification series this is more of a this is how things work now you can use this and run with it to apply it to the CCIE exam the CCIE exam itself was initially developed in 1993 by Cisco as the first real-world certification in the essence of you need to actually deploy this you need to set this up on real equipment in a real environment that really works and can really break if you do things wrong up till then all of the other certification exams for technologies uh, technology has really been just a written exam you go into the Sylvan or view testing environment and pass the exam for a hundred dollars or hundred twenty five dollars this one is not as cheap and this is this is the current cost as of the time of this recording and all of these facts are as of the time of this recording because you never know things could change when I took the exam it was a thousand dollars to take um, and that's just to take the test is plus hotel and plus airfare in essence it is an expensive venture to go on and it's it's very good to be very prepared before you go into that test. I think that's why it's so expensive and also they've dedicated employees to sit there and support you the entire time you're taking that exam which isn't a cheap thing for Cisco to do either. The passing score was around 80%, I think it was exactly 80%, and the test is broken down into a series of sections, each section is assigned a number of points, and you have to get a cumulative 80% of those points in order to pass. Now the total time to take the exam is eight and a half hours, and you get a half hour lunch. That was a little different, it used to be nine hours with a uh, one hour lunch, but trust me, once you're there you realize you don't need the whole hour because you probably won't be able to eat if you're anything like me. They give you a free little, it's, well, well, we'll call it free, uh, a $10 or $5 food voucher to get some food from the cafeteria. And uh, I think I left $4.15 and, and still on the card because uh, I was not hungry. So you only get a half hour lunch nowadays. The prerequisite for this exam is only the CCIE written exam, which at this time of this recording is around $300 to take. Uh, you do not have to have a CCNA. You do not have to have a CCNP. 
you can go straight for the CCIE. However, most people will get the other certifications along the way because that's just kind of during their study process, the path that they'll follow. Now, this certification must be renewed every two years or it will expire. Do not fear. You do not have to take the lab every two years. A lot of people panic when they see that. What you do need to take once every two years is either the CCIE written exam for routing and switching again and pass it, or you need to take one of the other CCIE written exams. For example, I'm going to be uh, heading towards my CCIE voice soon, so rather than take the CCIE routing and switching written exam, I'm going to take the CCIE voice, and if I pass that, it will also go for renewing my CCIE routing and switching. Now, this is just kind of an abbreviated list, the main points that I wanted to talk about on the facts, but they have a, a bulk of information at www.cisco.com forward slash CCIE. It will re redirect you to a full support site that has a wealth of resources, including a, a major topic breakdown of things to study before you go into that exam. Um, and it's funny because it hits the major topics and then adds a statement, something like, uh, these are the major topics, but you may also be tested on anything the Cisco router can do. <laughs> so um, essentially everything is fair game when you walk into this exam. Because of that, I've designed this series in huge technology umbrellas that will encompass as much of Cisco technology as I can in the time available. Now these are the major umbrellas of technology and I'm sure you can glance back and see all the titles that comprise each one of these. Some of these consist of three videos, some of these consist of six or seven or eight different videos that uh, tie things together. You can jump around as much as you'd like. Uh, you can you can take some WAN configuration, jump into LAN configuration, but what I would recommend is once you start on one of these technology umbrellas, like once you start into LAN configuration, go through that whole series because they do build on each other as you walk through it. Uh, they're not totally independent, although I tried as hard as I could to make them that way. But taking them all in a row will just give you a good feel for uh, com the complete breadth of LAN configuration. I then get into the LAN configuration where we'll talk about, oh by the way, LAN, that focuses primarily around the Catalyst 3550 series switch um, and, and tying that into the whole scheme of things. That that switch is is not a switch. That's it's a it's a whole nother world when we get there and you'll you'll see that in the LAN configuration. The WAN configuration we focus on the different WAN technologies. Frame relay being the biggest of those and the freshest on my mind because that's what we constantly use in the CCIE lab. Uh, ATM technology is also covered and ISDN in there as well. We get into the internal routing protocols and we walk through each of the routing protocols uh, one at a time. We start off with the distance vector world and RIP version 2. One of the nice things and something you should be very thankful for is that the CCIE exam has removed the class full protocols out there. So class full protocols, those are being IGRP and RIP version 1. So the, the closest thing we'll talk about is RIP version 2, which is the classless version of it. We then get into EIGRP, and then we spend the rest of the series on two protocols. Primarily OSPF, because that is a major protocol to understand, and ISIS, which uh, is intermediate system to intermediate system, one of the other link state routing protocols that you may encounter. We then move into advanced router technology, and that's kind of the umbrella that I use for all of the technology that doesn't have to do directly with routing protocols, such as HSRP, uh, network address translation, NAT, uh, voice over IP, multicast, uh, access list, when we talk about you know time-based access list, named access list, uh, dynamic access list, all of, the, all of the technology that fits under an umbrella of routers, but doesn't usually deal directly with the routing process itself. It's kind of like the the uh, whiz-bang-wham uh, features that you can add on top of that. And speaking of whiz-bang-wham, quality of service becoming a bigger and bigger part of what you need to know both for uh, setting up networks in the real world and also this exam. Voice, video, everything is merging into the data network and we need to make sure that that voice and video gets there okay. So we'll talk about using quality of service across things like ATM, we'll get into uh, integrated and differentiated services, talk about queuing types, fragmentation strategies, interleaving, oh the sky's the limit. Border Gateway Protocol will comprise the rest of the series where we talk extensively about BGP. Uh, there is 
so much that you are able to do with this distance vector routing protocol that links together the various pieces of the internet. As we go through each of these technology areas, I'm going to be spending the majority of the time in the live configuration interface, actually setting up each one of these, doing real practical examples of each technology on the Cisco routers and switches. But just watching me do the technology configuration and all the configuration on these devices is not enough. And this kind of leads me to the section that I think every person that has taken a CCIE class from me asks me about when I first walk in there. Do I need to set up my own practice lab? Do I need to purchase Cisco equipment to do this? Well, before I answer that first question, to buy or not to buy, let me tell you this. I am convinced that it is virtually improbable. Notice I didn't say impossible, but I will say virtually improbable that anyone will pass their CCIE exam without a lot of hands-on experience. And I say that because in the live hands-on experience, things will happen that no book can ever cover. Matter of fact, the majority of books that I've, I've read and I've worked with, I'll be doing the steps in there and things will be popping up on the screen that I'm looking in the book, I'm like, it didn't say this would happen and I have to figure out why it's happening. As a matter of fact, I've actually recorded the majority of this CCIE course that uh, you'll be going through right now and during the videos, things will happen that I didn't intend on. Messages will appear, neighbors won't form, that, and I keep the video live because I want you to walk through it with me and the troubleshooting process that we have to go through when these messages pop up. That sort of thing is impossible to get from a book, from just reading through the configuration steps of a Cisco router or switch. And that is what leads me back to this question. I believe it is impossible <laughs> improbable, sorry, that's the word I use, to pass the CCIE exam without a lot of that hands-on equipment. So back to the first question, to buy or not to buy? Well, that one is up to you and your finances. I will speak from my experience. When I was studying for the CCIE uh, lab exam, I purchased a rack of Cisco equipment of about 10 or 12 routers that I put together, and it did cost me about seven or eight thousand dollars, and that's just a, a guesstimate because it was probably more. I just I don't have the heart to add up the receipts. Um, a lot of people can't afford that. I couldn't afford it. I have to admit, it was on a credit card until I resold it all. That is the number one thing about Cisco equipment is they will maintain most of their resale value, not all of it. If you keep them for a while, it will go down. So that leads me to a couple other solutions. Instead of buying a rack of equipment, number one, you can go in with a couple other Cisco studying individuals in the area around you. There are many different websites on the internet dedicated to people studying for their CCIE exams and they have local groups that you can find and people that you can meet and I've seen many people they'll go in together on buying equipment so it's not as expensive located at someone's resident that has high-speed internet access and people will kind of pick days in the weeks that they'll use that equipment. The other alternative is to rent equipment. Renting equipment is typically can run between twenty to eighty to a hundred dollars a day, depending on how large the rack of equipment you rent uh, will be. Now, my problem: I rented equipment uh, for a while, and my problem is that I would rent it and I would just burn out about an hour or two into it and I would have the rest of the day where it would just end up getting wasted. I really needed to have that there because sometimes I just couldn't get up get up my nerve enough to sit there for an entire day when I did uh, rent that equipment. And I'll talk about uh, combining rentals and buying right now as I talk about the recommended equipment for your ideal lab environment. This list of equipment that you see here will allow you to practice the vast majority, if not all, of the topics that they can test you on on the CCIE lab exam for routing and switching. Now you notice that I have four little X's next to this, and this is my key below. I put rentable. When I purchased my rack of equipment uh, for the CCIE lab exam, I just frankly couldn't afford to purchase two Catalyst 3550s. That kind of left me with a big void because that is a huge land testing portion of the CCIE lab exam. So what I did was I rented it. For about two weeks, I rented 
a, a pair of 3550s from a fellow who had bought them for his exam, and he had a high-speed internet connection at home and said, I'm going to try and make some money back, and he rented them. I think it was like $18 a day that I got two 3550s, and that's all he really had. So I got to practice the commands, practice trunking, practice VLANs, and just spend nothing but... <laughs>